so at our booth NAB 2019 we have a really strong vision mixing section and one of our news this year is the Airfly Pro. So the Airfly Pro in itself is a product that we launched last year but what we like to do is to constantly improve our products and what we found is that we can improve the Kia section up here. So one of the things that is different is that now we have dynamic labels, the OLED displays for all the keys in this section. You can see this key will tie Kia um, uh, one and two to the next transition. You can see that we can make the cuts right here and if we use the shift key you have access to auto. So we have also up here we have adjustment of the um, uh, uh, transition rate for downstream Kia one and this is a four-way button so as you press the side you see how uh, we can adjust the value up and down. We can enable next transition background there and over here we have um, a section where if you know the old Airfly Pro, you might remember that this row of keys had fixed labels on the buttons. We have in this case duplicated that, but as you will recognize, having OLED legends for these means that you have far more flexibility in reconfiguring your panel. Let's go through what it does. In ME State 1, we have access to ME1 on the pro preview and the program row, so we also changed that only one display works with this column of buttons because we realized that it was better to have this place up here than down here since most likely your program and preview row will correspond to the column that this label already covers. This is why we did it like that. So of course you can have preview selection down here. You have program up here for your inputs and if I use the shift key over here you'll see that these labels are changing. If we move on to the auxiliary state over here you can see that these buttons now become auxiliary 2 and auxiliary 1 down here. So how, how will I know that this is auxiliary 1? Well, we have something on the shift key. If you press the upper edge of the shift key, we have something called display hijacking. It means that we can actually have the label reflect exactly what the lower button does. Um, and in this case, you can see it's changing from uh, auxiliary 2 to auxiliary 1 when you hold it down. So we are not completely left in the blind for what this one does. If we move on to the media state, if I had medias in the media players, I would see them right there. Let's move on. Here I can select fill and I can select key source for a fill source for the key of one and two. If I move on to macro, I can execute macros, run and uh, stop them. I can go here and now I have audio. And guess what? This is, this is audio selection, you see. I can turn on and off the audio sources in the ATEM switch I'm connected to. And on these buttons, I can adjust the volume. Wow, isn't that cool? As I press the sides, I'm turning off. I can hold it down and it will uh, move quicker. You can also see there's a scale that will show you the volume when I'm going from zero and up to 6 dB. I move on to the DVE. I can go to the user state. And in the user state, I have a camera selector for operating cameras. So you'll see in this section up here, I have values like white balance, detail, and so forth, uh, operating a Blackmagic design camera, I can adjust the iris value there, master black and so on, and I select the camera on these buttons, or alternatively I can use the four-way button up here. You also see that we have nice tally bars, so you can see the tally of the system is reflected right there when I'm not in the ME mode. So if I go back to ME mode, you see it right there, but if I'm in user, you can see that I have the tally from the system shown in those uh, uh, LED bars. This panel is extending this one over here, but it's not any more modular in the sense it was in the old days, so now we are using Ethernet to connect these two together. As I press up down the shift key, you'll see the layout on this panel over here changes, and if I release the shift key, then now, now I press the shift key, you can see I have access to other things than I had before. I don't think I'll go into detail. Now I'm releasing the shift key, and you see that I have access to uh, what is the default set of options. And that is how modularity was effectively used on many of our controllers. People just wanted to move a shift state between the two modules connected. And we can just as well do that over Ethernet. And it gives you more flexibility um, having it set up like this. So we think the Airfly Pro is a fantastic controller. In this section with these keys you can have NKK buttons. And what is that? Now, if you move over to another thing that has been extremely popular at the NAB 2019 show, it's the Master Key 1 along with the Master Key 36. 
these two awesome controllers, they have NKK buttons. This is the, the Sculptor Classic Broadcast button, which we all love to touch. But one of the downsides to these buttons is that you, you don't get our fantastic four-way button functionality that you have on the elastomers up here. But it's an option you can have, and actually, truth be told, you can have the NKK buttons, the 15 millimeter buttons, on your AirFly Pro. So, it's your choice whether you want to go with the Master Key 1 top of the line controller, or if you want to go with the AirFly Pro, possibly with an NKK button option to enjoy those classic broadcast buttons on your Switch or Surface. This is the AirFly Pro and the Master Key 1 series. Not to forget, also the XC7, a joystick that you can combine with this, so if you need it, you can have it all aligned and it just looks awesome. I'm sure it would fit right into your master control room. Um, so that's what we brought for NAB 2019 show. It has been really exciting to showcase these powerful controllers to all you guys who visited. Mm -hmm.